Hi I'm Ben, welcome to my book corner and we're properly kicking off my banned books read for 2024. This is part of my banned books challenge that I'm taking part in and if you're not aware of this challenge the idea of this is to read 24 banned books within 2024 to raise some awareness around some of these titles and get people talking about the state of book banning specifically in America but across the world as well as this movement seems to be disturbingly gaining a little bit of traction. So whilst I say this is the start of my fan books read, it technically isn't. I have already read one book off my list which was Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Mass. I will link my review on Goodreads in the links below. But I thought if we're going to start in earnest let's start with one of the big hitters for this challenge and we're starting with none other than gender queer so this is a non-fiction book so the review process will be slightly different to normal what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk a little bit about my babe's reasons for releasing this book as well as uh standing in terms of book bans after that I am actually going to talk about some band specifics as well and why I refer to this as one of the big hitters for the challenge before I talk about some of the themes and the timelines for the book itself and then I'll move on to talking about the art style and some of the artistic choices within this novel. So with all that said let's just talk a little bit about the author and air stances on why this book was written and also what my kebab thinks of book banning. So first off let's talk about why this has been written. So I'm reading a quote from an interview that Maya gave to Time magazine. I'm going to read it verbatim. So Maya states, I wrote this book in huge part because I was struggling to come out and I was asking myself all these questions and I was having these somewhat challenging conversations. And it often seems like I was never fully able to get my point across. And I got to the point where I thought I have to sit down and write about this because I don't feel like I am getting across verbally what I'm really trying to say. And at this point, I want to mention that not only is Genderqueer a non-fiction memoir, it's also a graphic novel, as Maya is a cartoonist and writer. And that's important, which we'll get on to a little bit why later on. Now, a few years later, um, in an interview with Slate magazine, Kebabe said the following. What I'm learning is that a book challenge is like a community attacking itself. The people who are hurt in a challenge are the marginalised readers in the community where the challenge takes place. This is readers who are younger readers who do not have the financial means to buy books if they're not available for free in the library. This is queer teens who might not feel comfortable bringing a book with such an obvious title into their home if they have more conservative parents who would only feel safe reading the book secretly in the library without even checking it out. So yes, it upsets me, because what I'm seeing is resources being taken away from queer, marginalised youth, which does hurt. That does hurt me. So just to reiterate a little bit around that, this book is a really important tool potentially for certain people. And again, I will touch on that later on. In case it's not already obvious, I do not like book banning in general. So we'll talk about that at the end of the video. But that's why Maya, first of all, wrote this title and also where they stand in terms of book banning. It is worth knowing or noting, I should say, that there are a couple of slides, not called slides, it'll come to me later, um, in the title that kind of covers why Maya wrote this and when the sort of thought process originally started, which is worth mentioning as originally when um, Air were learning to do the cartoon work, Air wrote a cartoon within um, 
their lessons and it sort of formed the basis at least for the start it seems for gender queer also before i go any further i do need to talk about pronouns so maya identifies with um, specific pronouns specifically e i'm air i will try to keep these right throughout the video these are new pronouns to me these are ones i have not come across in everyday life so I do apologize if I slip up. I am going to do my level best to get it right throughout the video though. Well, that's a little bit about Maya. Let's talk about the actual band. So why do I class this as one of the big hitters? And the answer is actually pretty simple. This was the most banned book in the US in both 2021 and 2022. So, I'm going to just read through the index of school bands. This is from pen.org, the website for Pen America. And I'm just going to go over a list of states where this is banned and each of the, I believe, the educational districts, county districts, I'm not 100% sure, that have banned it just in 2022 to 2023. So, Colorado. Cherry Creek School District. Florida, Collier County Public Schools. Orange County Public Schools. School District of Manatee County. St. Lucie Public Schools. Idaho, Kuna School District. Maine, which at this point I just want to point out, Maine has the most boring names. Administrative Districts 52. School Unit 24 and School Unit 56. Michigan, Galesburg Augusta Community Schools. Spring Lake Public Schools. Independence School District. Lindbergh Schools. Melville School District. Rockwood School District. Webster Groves School District. And Wentzville School District. New York, Washingtonville Central School District. North Carolina, Alamance Burlington School District. Oklahoma, Tulsa Public Schools. Oregon, Canby Public School District. Pennsylvania, Central Books School District. Texas, Fort Worth Independent School District. Utah, Alpine School District, Wisconsin, Shaboggan Area School District, I may have said that one wrong, and finally Wyoming, Natrona County Schools. Now just to specify, that is just bans and challenges from 2022 into 2023. That's a lot of bans in there. So... Now we know some of the ban information and some of the stances. What is it about this book that has so many people up in arms? So the reasons for some of these bans on the surface do make sense, or challenges I should say make sense. We'll talk about this a bit more later on, but this does contain quite explicit imagery. Now the imagery is in service to what Maya is pulling across in terms of lived experience and therefore with context it makes complete sense and invalidates the complaint. However there has been a number of movements with just screenshots or pictures posted online of just the images with no context whatsoever and in that sort of case it is really easy to get a mob going because if you were to tell almost any parent that there's a book in school it's got this picture in it this is disgusting a lot of parents will get up in arms very quickly now that being said the context of the book invalidates that very very easily the other issue i think that this book has is the fact in a way that it's a graphic novel and there is a weird sort of switch in people's brains when it comes to graphic novels as people assume that they are comics and comics therefore are for children now first of all comics are not all for children there are plenty of examples of amazing comics that are aimed at adults 
and Maya herself has said that initially genderqueer was to be aimed at adults and parents who may have children going through similar sort of challenges and to help them kind of understand what some of those challenges are and to try and give a little bit of insight into the, the thought process but also potentially for all the teenagers by all the teenagers this appears to be from the ages of 14 upwards where they are beginning to ask or well on the way to asking certain questions about themselves which this book can help people answer the other thing finally that doesn't help is there's a disparity in recommended reading ages for this there is no formalized reading age structure for books generally speaking around the world so when you actually look at this one the school library journal in 2019 said that this was suitable for grade 9 and upwards which would be 14 15 upwards i believe barnes and noble the book retailer says it's appropriate for ages 15 and above and amazon says 18 and above so there is a bit of a disconnect in what age this may potentially be suitable for and i think there is a case for that actually being quite ambiguous anyway not everybody's reading level or maturity level or different levels of development is the same especially through teenage years which would explain a bit of a gray area there but it does give once again people some very very easy ammunition because all you need to do is go this is suitable for 18 plus but it's in a school library where under 18s are and again you automatically have the bullets for the argument do I think it's a good argument? No. And I'll talk about why later. So that's the sort of gist of the ban information. But what actually is this book? So I'm going to circle back briefly to what Maya said in the interview about not being able to get across the message that uh, we're trying to, to explain just with words. And that is very much what this book is. This is a memoir and a graphic novel. Now, this covers Maya's life from early childhood all the way up to mid to late 20s. It's a bit ambiguous about what age Maya is when this stops. I'm pretty sure I saw the age 26 in here. It may finish a couple of years after that. At time of recording, Maya was born in not at time of recording maya was born in 1989 so that would put them around the age of 33 34 at time of recording this video and this isn't a coming of age um observation this is almost in many ways like a day-to-day -day face this situation and then almost for want of a better word a dream journal of the thought process of how that looked from Maya's point of view and how it made Maya feel and that is why this is so so successful this covers a lot of themes starting most importantly obviously with um, gender identity and the first realizations at quite an early age of discomfort within Maya's own body it covers going through puberty so it therefore does cover things like the menstrual cycle and the drawbacks and the side effects of going through that especially with a confused gender identity and by confused what i mean by that is that due to the time period that maya was growing up in there wasn't a great deal of talk around this or vocabulary easily available around this not just this as well but also around sexual identity and maya does an outstanding job of fetching that across within the book and i mentioned sexual identity there and this looks at the difficulties of finding sexual identity just in general you know everybody at some point does struggle a little bit finding that little bit of themselves and finding a way to be comfortable and when you add the extra layer on top of your own gender uncertainty actually when you really stop and think about it that makes an already difficult situation almost impossible how do you go out on dates with people? 
when you can't identify as yourself. You don't know how to. And the difficulties of that and working through that are really, really well shown. And I'll show some pictures a bit later on. Then it talks about almost, for want of a better word, sexual awakening. And the point where the world begins to expand a little bit in terms of vocabulary. It, one thing that is mentioned in here, which I don't think we really consider as a major thing, and we probably should, it's when social media platforms added multiple different choices to um, sexuality options. For many, many, many years, the only options were straight, gay, bi, lesbian. That was it. But what if you're none of those? And just for the re record, um, I, I, I believe that Maya is asexual. And it comes to terms with discovering that, but how do you know what that is without knowing the word? Because words we use as identifiers, and identity is the key thing running through this. This is how do you identify without the words to correctly identify. And that's why it's difficult, or would have been difficult for Maya to explain just verbally. It then moves on to adulthood and going through late school, college, I presume uni. The school system in America is a bit different to over here. And talks about finding your tribe in a lot of ways, finding people that accept you for who you are and you start to feel comfortable enough with to be yourself. And there's a few moments that you would call coming out moments in here that are almost accidental and quite pure in a way. And then finally, you have a point where Maya kind of rejects some of their own binary preconceptions, for want of a better word here, as quite early on, there was a rejection of femininity and the rejection of femininity pushed into masculinity. So in ways of dress, the rejection of female orientated clothes and colors, you know, pink was out, dark and baggy clothes were in and very much dressing like a boy. And eventually it hit a point of, well, not a boy though, not a girl either. Why should I dress like either? Why not just dress like what I want? And that is a really powerful moment as well. And the final thing is that Maya does teach cartoonology at the back end of this book. And there's some talk there about when do you correct someone for getting your pronouns wrong? Or should you correct them? Because sometimes that'll take the moment away from them. There is a moment later on in the book where a mother comes up and is saying how happy they are for their daughter to have a female role model because there were no female role models in various different positions like CEOs, artists, creators, so on and so forth when they were growing up and they're so happy that their daughter has Maya as a female role model. And Maya stood there going, but I just want to say I'm not a female role model. I didn't meet any of my role models or anyone even like me until I was this age and didn't say anything. And it poses the question, who is it on to get this right? Is it on the person with the pronouns to educate or the other person to ask? And I think there's a bit of both there. And then it ends with the thought of when I'm teaching my classes, should I be clear about my pronouns and my identifiers? Is it too political for the classroom? Or by not doing this, am I doing a disservice to pupils in the class that may be going through these sorts of challenges in their own life and therefore robbing them of the opportunity to ask questions and maybe help them in ways that are otherwise not going to help. This is quite a powerful book just because of the various different themes that it is tackling. But what does elevate this and really drives the message home is the artwork. So in terms of the art, this is a full colour graphic novel and it is solidly drawn. It is relatively simple in a lot of its presentation. Very colourful. Um, and actually what I have hadn't really realised initially while reading through it is the use of a the different colour palettes at certain points of the story. 
that really do show the sense of mood. But where this really, really takes off for me is when it hits a more esoteric style, where it almost goes down the brain journal sort of route to try and explain the thought process. And I'll chuck a couple of them up on screen, but there's a few pages in here that really, really did stand out. And a lot of this falls between pages 62 and 69, 70, 70, page 70. And it does a really good job of getting the idea across of thinking about one thing, but not knowing how to explain it and how that idea grows into something better. And it uses the imagery of a plant for this. And I'm actually going to read verbatim from the book because I think this is absolutely beautiful. And I think this is something that should be worth out there. I don't have a picture for the first page. So that's the first page of it, give you an idea. And you've got the male and female sort of aspects at the top and the other one at the bottom, the neutral term. My deepest emotional relationships have always been with women. Did that mean I was a lesbian? But my sexual fantasies involved two male partners. Was I a gay boy trapped in a girl's body? The knowledge of a third option slept like a seed under the soil. And then it moves on to these two pages, which I'll put another picture of them on the screen in a minute. This seed put out many leaves but I didn't have the language to identify the plant. I wish I had a gender neutral name. I wish I was a boy. I never want to have sex. I wish I had short hair. I never want kids. I hate my breasts. I feel like something is wrong with me. That last line right there is a killer because no kid should ever be allowed to feel like that just saying that as a parent i find that quite heartbreaking in many regards in high school i began to theorize that i had been born with two half souls one female and one male and it does talk about the coping the inventing of a lost male twin sort of within the psyche and the coping mechanisms there and it does an amazing job of driving that home. The next one, which I will put on screen in a second, is sort of like the, the wheel of thought, I'd like to call it. The sort of the spiral that your brain can go down. Everyone has moments like this where they overthink something. And it does a great job of showing just how easily it is to go into that kind of mental doom spiral in many regards. It would be remiss if I did not talk about the more controversial panels within the book. One of the most controversial one was where Kebab is fantasizing about a situation involving two males, one of which touching the penis of another. This is actually based on some artwork of some Greek pottery depicting a courting scene. And again, this is at a point in the book where it's talking about discovering sexual preferences and this might be a shock to some people but teenagers want to find out what their sexual preferences is just because it makes you feel uncomfortable does not mean that this is a thing that doesn't happen all right there's no for one where there's a sex act involving kebab and their girlfriend and a strap on and just saying some of this stuff out loud without any context you can see how you could get a mob riled up with this but it's not just scenes of a sexual nature. This does talk about gender, which does get seem to be a hot button topic with people that this doesn't really affect in any way. We have wobbly camera, everybody. But for me, the most shocking imagery in the book is none of that. It's actually when Kebab goes for their first pap smear exam. And there's a two page spread, which I can't show on here, of basically it looks like a sword just driven through the stomach from the back as the sense of violation that kebab felt during and after that and the psychological damage that that actually had on maya and that plays in later on when they go for a second one later on 
and can't go through with it because of how psychologically damaging that first one was. Not because of anything the doctor necessarily did wrong, or nurse necessarily did wrong, but more because it kind of drove home the born in the wrong body feeling that Maya already had. This also talks about puberty. There is imagery in here that shows menstruation. It shows bloody towels as well, which can be uncomfortable for some people. So that's worth mentioning as well. But this is a fairly sane, sensible, normal art piece for the most part. And the bits where it is shocking or varies from that is in service to the message in service to the experience being described and it works really well off the words on page so this is a divisive book i think it's well worth a read however i gave this four stars out of five the reason this doesn't get higher is simply because of lived experience whilst this is a thought-provoking book for me and is really really insightful on an emotional level, it doesn't hit quite as hard in places, simply because it's so far from my personal lived experience. That being said, for the right person, this could be a lifesaver, literally. Or it could save someone from years of feeling isolated and alone and broken because they don't know how to talk about this and they don't know other people going through this and they think they're the only one they just think they're strange and broken and for those people i think this would be a life changer i understand why there's push bands to push this but i think we're asking the wrong question because the idea of banning a book from a school is often posited as to protect the children I'm a parent, for those of you that don't know. You don't protect anybody in the long term by taking tools away. You protect people by either giving them the tools or by teaching them how to make the tools to deal with the situations that they face within their life. And this book is a tool for some people to help them get through, to help them make the right choices. For me, banning a book like this is abuse. Simple as. That's my thoughts on this book, though. I think it's well worth checking out. And that is the first review on video for my banned books challenge. What I would like to know is what banned books would you like to see me read this year? Let me know in the comments below. Keep it polite. I know this one could be a bit of a hot button topic for some people. I'll see you all soon.